Okay, it's recording. Um, hi, everyone. Welcome to the Dynamic Data and Capabilities Working Group. Um, so uh, let's start with um, anyone volunteering for to be a note taker? <laughs> uh, it's, it's, a ugly, uh, it's a difficulty like finding the, the, the guy, right? Yeah, it's just, uh, it's just for, for questions and at, at the end, I think. So the updates, no, no need to transcribing those. And we also can resort to, to transcribing after the recording. I wouldn't mind taking notes. It's just like I have never taken one of these meetings before, so I'm not sure about the format. Mm -hmm. Is it just There's like just... Write, writing the questions in the end? Yes, I think I think that's that's usually um, how it's done. If there's any que any any question, uh, well, also the the discussion. I think it's it's kind of useful to to be in putting the the um, to be writing what what conclusions we're we're getting to or the questions that are are pending uh, and need to be addressed uh, later. But it, I mean that that can you can still you can still do it after uh, the fact. Okay, I'll do it. No problem. So yeah, okay. Cool, thank you. Right, so not takers you. Okay, so everyone added himself to the list of attendees. If not, please do. Um, You're meaning the list on, on, on the end or? Sorry? Where do you, where can I find the list of, oh, it's here, okay, I found it. Yeah. And the grip pad, and the, yeah. at the header, yeah. Okay, so I'm adding myself. Okay. So everyone um, has added the items for this uh, agenda that they want to discuss here. If not, please, please add them. All good? Anyone pending? No? Okay, let's move on. Cool, so a uh, round of intros uh, by order of the attendee list. Um, I think introducing ourselves may be useful since, since we have some new faces to this uh, meeting. Um, Gonçal, you want to start? Sure, I can go ahead. Super quick introduction. So I've been, uh, I've been around in these uh, meetings for, for, for a bit, I'm quite interested about CRDTs. I've uh, been working with uh, my own implementation of JSON CRDT in Golang, taking that forward and really interested in the subject. Also been reading quite a bit about uh, garbage collection and snapshotting and yeah, that's about it. Thank you, Gonçal. Uh, David, wanna go ahead? Yeah, sure. So I run I'm David, uh, the tech lead for JSIPFS and JSIP Group here. I've been like working on IPLD land since it was created, <laughs> as I was implementing it on JS, and been part of the discussions for CRDTs and dynamic data and capabilities and cryptographic ACLs and all that stuff. Um, I'm not like I'm like maybe 10% of my time is focused on this stuff, and so I'm here to answer questions and just to understand where things are going and what people have been working on lately. Cool. Um, Joao? Yeah. Hi everyone. I am uh, I'm Joao. Um, I started working last week during the IPFS Hack Week in Lisbon uh, with Pedro and Andre on um, building some identity system for uh, authentication in PeerPads. And from then, we've been like sort of hacking in a, a document, some thoughts on what identity might look like in the context of PeerStar um, systems. And yeah, I've been working with the feed for a while on a project related to IPFS as well. And so right now I'm here doing this like yeah, anything. Yeah. Thank you, Joao. Um, Andre, wanna go? Yeah. Hello everyone. So I'm Andre Andre Cruz. Uh, some of you might know me as Satazor on GitHub. Um, I've contributed uh, in um, some open source projects like um, npmsr.io. Um, so this is my first time attending this um, meeting. So this um, meeting. I, I'm, I'm seeing some echo. I'm hearing some echo from someone. Okay. I think we're uh, all muted except except you. 
No, it was Christopher. He entered and he left. For it was probably him. Okay. So, oh. um, so I will be building a decentralized application on top of MPFS, and uh, I will be working additionally on some of the foundations necessary to do so, like uh, identity and, and like um, uh, Jean said. Um, and hopefully some of these contribution, contributions will land on Peerstar so that everyone uh, besides PeerPad um, could use them to build their own decentralized applications. Um, so that's it. Cool, thank you. Um, so me, here I'm Pedro, I'm the captain of this working group. I've been working for uh, almost two years here uh, on IPFS. Uh, lands. So I'm like a year ago I, I got interested in, in CRDTs. Uh, well, before that time, but actually I started implementing them on top of APFS. And uh, I've been focusing more on the CRDT part, but I'm also taking a lot of interest in the identity stuff that we've been discussing lately. And um, also I, I implemented the first and current version of uh, PurePad. Uh, well, the back end, not, not the front end. And, uh, and so we, we, we've, been, we've been discussing a lot, a lot about that, how that mixes with CRDTs, mixes with uh, auth 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 uh, ACLs, how they mix with identity, and uh, we're trying to solve that, that part. And I'm, I think we may have, have been making great progress. I'm very excited. Um, so we could now go ahead with uh, like a round of updates on the same order, if that's possible, Gonzalo? Sure, I'll, I can go ahead first. So um, these last couple of weeks, I merged the uh, explanation about JSON CRDT uh, paper. Um, if, you, if you guys wanna go through it and if you have more suggestions to add or to correct, please, please go ahead. Um, and also been reading about uh, snapshotting and garbage collection or about uh, snapshotting in, in sort of a dynamic data structures, peer or replicated data structures and, and trying to see how it plays in the CRDT and JSON CRDT more in specific kind of world. Uh, been also trying to comment and follow the, 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 the thread, the issue uh, about the subject. Uh, the conversation is quite interesting. Thank you so much for the, for the input. And, um, and yeah, that's pretty much it. I've been... Uh, been also kind of wondering, and I, I also put a question at the end, what are sort of a priorities and what's, what's up next so I can maybe pick something up. That's from me. Cool, thank you, Gonzalo. Um, thank you a lot for that contribution, that explaining of the Justin charities. It's made a lot of sense, made it, easy, made it very easy for me to, to understand it. Um, so if you haven't checked it out, if you're interested, there's a link, I, I think, in your, yeah, in your notes. Um, Cool. Uh, yeah, definitely. Let's let's list priorities at the end. Take a bit of time, and and then see how you can fit in. Um, all right. Who's next? Um, cool, David. Yeah. Uh, no big update. Just basically I've been having a lot of discussions with Pedro, uh, Andre, and John on identity. The distributed applications, uh, past logging, and so on. So, uh, yeah, just IPFS has been released today, 029. So that's my big event, I guess. <laughs> yeah, find it on your favorite. Watch star. Congrats. <laughs> Thank you. Cool. Get some beers uh, tonight. Yes. <laughs> some remote beers for me. Um, cool. So, Joao. Uh, Wanna go ahead? Yeah, so um, I'll try to summarize what we've been working on on this past week. Um, so during the, the IPFS hackathon, Pedro, David, uh, and um, Andre and I started to working on like a small hack in which you could essentially identify other peer pad users using a sort of DID that you could issue on the Ethereum blockchain. So we ended up on, on something with a uh, user logged in, so you could like then linked to his Twitter account that confirmed that he was actually in control of that, uh, of that identity. Um, but then David started talking about, okay, but we have to find a way to control, act, to, to control the access to the document itself. Um, 
and from there things kind of went out of control and ended up like writing a whole document for how an identity system could be built uh, to be used on, on this type of distributed, uh, decentralized application, sorry. Um, so what we ended up with was, in the, case of, in the case of PeerPad, for instance, a user gains access to the platform by having the, the keys to the document. So there's a read key and a write key. And we were figuring out a way of how can we share these keys uh, safely. So a, a way to do that would be every PeerPad user would have a, a contact book like a list of addresses of people that he trusts in, that he has verified their, their identities. Um, that contact list would provide public keys to establish secure communications with each of, those, uh, each of those parties. And from there, the user could create a secure channel to send the, um, the right key to the document, like the, the document keys, essentially. Now, there's like some open issues as to how should that secure channel be created? Should we implement something called the DID auth? Should we use some, something like uh, making a TLS channel uh, using DIDs? Uh, should we just use the best phrase to generate keys to make that, that uh, connection? Um, there are also open issues as to what exactly is a proof of identity. So how should we identify a person? Because it's easy to prove that you have control over a, a key pair, so over a private key, but it's another thing to prove that you actually are who you say you are. So then we diverge to something like a proof of personhood where a person proves that it is actually a person and which person it is. Um, and then there's also a discussion as to how key rotation would happen in that case. So you would have like your root key in which all of your other keys would be uh, authenticated with. But let's say that you lost your key or that you just wanted to rotate it because it had been exposed for a long time. Uh, how could you actually do that? Like we, also, we are looking at a bunch of uh, DID methods, so something like uport, um, also looking at what Keybase is doing to see if is there something out there that already does what we need, or do we need to build uh, something from scratch? So um, that's where we are right now. Like all of these discussions are open. There's like no specific conclusion on, on any of them. Yeah. I, I put the link of uh, the GitHub um, Markdown document that we have been working on. So that can can um, everyone can see it, and perhaps we can have a deeper discussion uh, around it. Uh, maybe explain it um, more in depth, and have a discussion on, on on each of the sections, and people can intervene and, and give feedback and all of that. I don't know. Uh, what what should do? How, how should we proceed? Should we? Present the document um, like uh, phrase by phrase, read it, and and people give feedback. Oh, uh, I, I don't think so. I don't think so because uh, I mean, people uh, I've posted the, the in the notes in the in the issue yesterday, so people kind of had the time to to, to read it. If they don't, they didn't, but they can comment later. We can just say we can merge the the thing tomorrow if there is no no further comments if there is we, we can address them meanwhile and and then try and aim still aim for tomorrow for 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 a merge it doesn't need to be that we have um, to like it's going to be written in stone we can just uh, keep it writing on on this especially when when it comes to to implementing this that there obviously will be i think uh, versions of the spec uh, as long as you keep them in sync, I think it's it's totally fine. It's very exploratory work. Also, um, I'm also a bit concerned about the, well, I, should, I don't know if we should be discussing this yet, but since you brought it up, we should be concerned a bit uh, about uh, how it overlaps with existing solutions. As you said, you port, uh, Keybase, et cetera, so that we don't kind of repeat ourselves from the, the, all the things that I've been reading. There's some, a bit of overlap here and there, especially in the specs part, the idea of, uh, uh, Joan has also mentioned that. Um, so we kind of try, try not to reinvent the wheel here, but all at the same time have something very, um, very minimal that we can start implementing uh, uh, right away. Um, not sure if that is, thank, we kind of would like to have like a subset of this spec that we can go ahead and and, and implement and as a, as a proof of concept, concept. and and that's it. Um, so, Andre, you wanna or, the, or João, you wanna comment? Oh uh, yeah, I've got a comment. Um, ah, so, sure. so we have some um, we have some working code 
um, with uh, with did documents um, and in creating proofs and um, uh, we've got a uh, a service. Sorry, I'm late. By the way, we've got a we've got a very basic identity service um, in in the in uh, shipyard uh, that I actually want to convert into being uh, a sort of wrist uh, arrest did method. Um, and so we're actually really close on having um, a very basic prototype um, that that follows did and, and implements uh, so some basic rest uh, did methods for um, for uh, attesting did documents. So we've already got a, something that creates a self-signed proof. Um, one of the problems with dids is that you have to then reinsert the proof back into the did. We're not doing that, mostly because uh, the W3C documents around doing that um are very much in flux right now um because you have to have you have to have a canonical form of for json objects and such and like the way the w3c documents link back and forth for that is uh, inconsistent so just an external proof for now um and then so self-signed proof and then a uh uh, service attestation proof and so we're actually really close on having a prototype that we can uh, demo to you um, in fact probably by by next week maybe by next uh, Monday's meeting can I ask you something once cool. um, th this service will be running on each machine machine of like an each uh, EPFS node, or is it a service that we must trust? Um, do you understand the question? Are you asking me? If you're asking me, um, the the way it works is that a so for a, a distributed app, um, I can generate. From my web client, generate a, uh, a did, and I can generate a proof of just self signing it, which isn't much of a proof, obviously. And then I can take it to Uport or to another identity service to have it attested optionally. Also, other users can vouch for me and attest it. It's a little bit different than a testing, actually. It's just a, it's more like a, it's more like vouching. Um, but if I take it to an identity service and they attest it, then I can do things like rotating keys um, and having multiple sessions. So I can say, you know, this did, this did is attested and this did is attested both to the same user at that service. And then I can start rotating things and so on and so forth. Um, or I can use the same did document and then just just uh, pen. I can I can actually uh, make a did document with the same identifier, but it has all of my session keys in it. Um, but the idea is that a session has its own key pair, and then is attested against um, a service. So um, whether that service is something that I run myself and I say these are all of my IDs, or whether it's a centralized identity service like Uport or like this uh, REST uh, attestation service um, that we're prototyping, or or whatever. Um, yeah, so there's there's a bunch of different approaches. You know, if we're all just on our own network and there's no attestation service, basically you get well, this is this person's session. I can choose to trust it or not, um, and. Um, and then if there's an attestation service that I trust, oh, well, they say that they're actually this person. And so now this did document means that, you know, anybody that attests it uh, is just more people vouching for that person. Uh, yeah, I, I understand, understood the, the, the mechanism. Um, I, I, I understood the mechanism. I'm just concerned that uh, relying on this, like a centralized service to do these uh, stations 
is something that we are kind of fighting here. And mm -hmm. for instance, you port, uh, the philosophy itself is decentralized, but, but they rely on uh, centralized REST um, um, endpoint to do the communication and the transport between a mobile application and a web client, for instance, because they don't know each other. Uh, but by using uh, EPFS, obviously, uh, we can circumvent that because the nodes themselves can exchange messages directly and uh, there's no necessity in relying um, correct me if, if I'm wrong but there's no, there's no necessity in relying in a centralized um, service for, for this. Right, no, there, it, you don't have to rely on the centralized service um, and Uport uses uh, an Ethereum uh, attestation based service uh, using an Ethereum proxy so that's that's another way to go and that's uh, i believe not centralized i honestly don't know how uh, ethereum proxy services work but i believe they're not there uh don't have to be centralized um yes david uh, i can answer that one essentially uh, like they just tell you you have to point this at any ethereum node so you can like run any ethereum node on your own machine if you want to uh, and like run the same smart contract. Of course, like they want it made nice for users, so they just like host a bunch of Ethereum nodes. And, like you have to trust their endpoint when you are doing that. Um, but the idea is that like one day the whole Ethereum client, or light client, or light node, or whatever they call it, this week, uh, will be able to run in the browser as well, so that you can have like the whole thing mm -hmm. in your browser uh, without having to install any without having to do any extra steps. It's kind of like part of the migration path. Yeah, so so the way I see it is that like a centralized attestation service is optional. So it can be distributed. It can just be that um, you, you use a chain of trust or something else. Uh, other people attest your your identity. And so since, so, since David attested my identity, then then um, I'm willing to accept it, you know. So, uh, yeah, there's there's a bunch of ways to cut that. I, I can add also. Uh, I don't know if you were here, Nathan, uh, where where Joao and um, Andrea were explaining how it started. So we started like doing a fun hack for doing login on PeerPad using Ethereum, uh, basically MetaMask. Uh, Plug uh, add-on, and and then we we kind of some things like led to, to 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 the other. And right now we don't focus too much on attestation. We're more focused on how to exchange the the right, read and write keys of of peer pads safely between between peers. So uh, it's it will eventually get to attestation. But I, I think if we um, in peer star if you devise. Uh, a, a resolving mechanism for different uh, DID methods. Like one is is what what you did. The, the other one is Ethereum or base uh, thing that that we we hacked on. Uh, I think this could uh, be decided later or, or live together at least in in the code base or even in, in the same app. Um, that's that's uh, so just to get get you in in context of of what we did here. Um, I think we can we can still further, further discuss. I think there are some items on the agenda uh, to further discuss this. Uh, just just to, to uh, Andre uh, to, to further the the um, the updates. Andre, do you have any any update you want want to share? Like uh, things that you um, yeah, I've had two two things here. Uh, just, just a second. So people. Um, so I, I added two items, uh, which is uh, the discuss uh, where is data store that can be replicated. So essentially, this came out as an idea, um, but it, but uh, I eventually searched and actually this this concept, concept uh, um, in in which is called decentralized um, hub hubs. But basically, the concept is having resources. Resources can be anything like a document on EPFS or a document uh, anywhere else. And people have access, people that have access to that uh, resource have the public keys and the private keys to interact with. 
and those resources can be stored safely and replicated across um, devices or across identities. Um, and eventually I searched uh, for this concept and I found that Identity Hub uh, has, has, has this concept overall and this is something that we could explore. For instance, if you look at PeerPad, a PeerPad document which has uh, writes and reads keys, it could be stored in, a, in an Identity Hub and shared um, with, identity, with other identities. The others book itself that we uh, explored in the, in the identity um, pull request that there's here, uh, actually they, it could be also stored as a document and has a, 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 as a resource and be shared and be uh, synchronized or replicated among other devices. And I think we should explore this as a foundation uh, to our uh, decentralized applications because it will, be, it will simplify a lot of things that uh, we have been um, discussing, discussing in all of these um, GitHub issues. Um, I added another, another uh, item, which is, which is the address book overlap with uh, the centralized LDAP. Um, I, ca I came with this white paper um, and I found a lot of similarities with it, which is basically a crowdsourced contact list which also has a private uh, contact list that you could have and you, could, you, and you wanted to keep, keep secrets. And uh, I think we could explore these a bit and, and see uh, the overlap between, between the, the two things that we have been talking about. Um, and that's it, that's what I've had. Uh, cool. Um, so yeah, you told me about this URL story idea. Um, do you have a link to, to, to have, to have uh, anything on, on GitHub? Uh, if you could share, uh, if you have, could share yeah, that on the I note. haven't, but I have here the, the explainer markdown of the identity hub. And mm -hmm. basically they are, they are explaining what I already explained to you. And mm -hmm. um, specifically I will link, I will update the link to the parts, which is the stores. I will, I will link correctly to that anchor. Okay, cool. So they have this concept of stores, which is essentially like a local storage, for instance, on your browser, something like that, that you can write and read um, from that. And also, also third parties can write on your store. Like uh, we, you can do stuff like uh, at stations uh, here with, with this feature. And essentially having a store, you can then replicate it, replicate it across devices. So essentially you have a store and you as the owner can write it and also accept a, a third party identities to write on it as well. And then you can take this store and replicate it across devices. Okay, uh, let, let's take a look and-, and David, David wants to speak. And perhaps, uh, oh, okay. Uh, just a question. I feel like what you're describing is just like a, a network volume, like you are mounting it locally and so you can write to it and so the, the changes get propagated. Uh, it's kind of like being a, like a folder in Dropbox or Google Drive, but of course with all the guarantees that IPFS gives and capabilities can give. Uh, there is a lot of prior work uh, on this for MFS, so the mutable file system. When you have an IPFS node, I go on at the JS one, it's still getting implemented. Uh, you can create virtual directories and then virtual directory always has a root hash, but you can treat it as a normal, like Unix uh, file system uh, folder. And, and so you can like attach that with a name and you get kind of like this shared volume where like you can just follow this name and keep updating the, the version that you have locally and keep updating this virtual directory and you get this property of like everything is immutable and, and the updates are propagated through like a signed record because it's an IPNS name. Uh, the, the plumbing on this is still very wonky. Like it, you need to understand what's happening to actually make it work. Um, there is also uh, like a restart of this idea by Gozala with IPFS drive, which is essentially the same thing. And so I feel like we, we need to like just craft these primitives so that it works for like file system like directories, like file system like graphs, um, files, directories, symlinks, etc. And for the things that this group needs, which are not necessarily files, they are just like data structures that need to be synced and then multiple peers need to work together. Uh, I'll get the links and, and I'll post on the notes. 
Yeah, yeah. Yeah, um, <coughs> yes, th these, these uh, features, uh, the, this start feature, uh, just to make it clear, and, and I think there's a lot of potential in using APFS for this, of course. Um, think of it <coughs> as you have an application like PeerPath, and PeerPath has uh, access to this storage um, that belongs to the identity. So other applications can't see uh, or can, and can't write to other stores from other applications. So this like PeerPath can write on the identity um, documents uh, as well as the identity itself. So this is a very powerful primitive because anything that can be stored and replicated by the same identity but on other devices is a very pow powerful primitive. You can store others working here, we can store like the, the document keys um, being used by, by uh, PeerPad to, to access and write uh, on the document. We can store like user preferences. Let's say that PeerPad now, ha now has a um, preferences document that has um, a theme which is a white and black or something like that. You can store those documents uh, there and be replicated among uh, other devices. And this is a very powerful primitive and uh, I think we should look at these and, and see how, how it ties up or how it integrates well with APFS and eventually develop a, a small library on, on Peer Star um, demonstrating this concept and how, how, how the API would look like, etc. cetera. Um, I don't know if, if you guys understood the, the concept of these stars. I think I, I, think I did. Uh, just bear in mind that the, the concurrency granularity is the document itself. So it doesn't allow for concurrent rights unless we implement the uh, CRDT. Uh, that's that's the, a problem with the uh, APNS type uh, thing. It's, 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 it's centralized. I mean, it's not centralized, it's uh, one writer. Yeah, uh, yeah, but, but it is, this is a one-on-one. -on -one. So the, mm -hmm. in case of the document itself, it couldn't be stored on, on these stores because only the identity or, or this is scoped to the identity. So it's more like a local storage thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay. Understood. It would be very cool to arrive at the primitive where you could just say like new array, new object, new something. And then when you pass the constructor of that type, you say, I want to share this with these peers. And then you can do add more peers and remove peers. Like just like the own object that like the class that represents the type as the properties to add and remove, um, add and remove oak access. So that it makes it very easy because like from the perspective of a user, you're still like tinkering with an object or when you're ready, you still have the push, the pop, whatever, but underlying, like you have the, the, the CRDT doing the work for you. So it's like, yeah, like did, did you want to say something yeah. better? Probably already have a solution. Uh, no, 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 I, it, that ties very, very well with the, something that I'm working on, which is like the dream API for, for peer store. Uh, it's, it's exactly what, what you, what you described, like like you associate a given CRDT type, and then you have all, all the the ACL control primitives there, right in your object, and also you get uh, all the, the mutation change event uh, on on that object, and all the mutators also. So you just use it as a it's, it's an array like thing. You use it as an array has an inter, uh, array like trait uh, to it. So it's very well. I was I was hearing. So it, it's it's on on the words. I'm. I, the idea here is that like, uh, I want to look at what identity uh, thing congels into and, and then uh, try and look at, at the Dream API, see if that Dream API can support that. Uh, and, uh, and, and then it's right, it's right on that. So it's a, a pending pull, a pull request we have on PeerStar. Well, the, to define the API basically, it's not implemented yet. Okay, that's, that's all from my list of discussions okay um who's next okay uh myself all right so let's see the updates yeah so help joan and, and uh joan with the theorem based uh, login into peerpad helped uh joan and, and andre with that discussion on on identity and key uh, sharing um which led to a bit more discussion but uh, uh, which is all, all public and congealed on, on uh, um, reflected on the pull request uh, that I listed here. Um, so on other land, CRDT land, 
I completed, uh, documented, and released uh, Delta CRDTs uh, package for, for JavaScript. Um, so, oh, and I specified, I didn't complete here, I specified a proposal for uh, fast sync for uh, pure CRDT IPFS uh, transport and store. Um, something that I, I would like the interested parties to to review and and and, and comment. This is something that that will like a protocol that not only tries to do a fast uh, a fast sync instead of relying on a DAG sync uh, implements a fast sync over a protocol. It also tries to create a, a, a scalable topology on top on top of the all the application peers. Not not all the peers, but all the, the application peers. So uh, if you guys could uh, um, read it and and comment, I would appreciate it. Um, what else in progress? Yeah, identity management in Peerstar. Uh, that's it from me. Cool. Um, so next, uh, Lance, you want to go ahead with your your update? Lance, you there? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, yeah, so I've been working on Peer CRDT uh, and starting getting it integrated into PeerPad, uh, getting a text area bound. Uh, got the proof of concept of that working Friday? Friday. Uh, ran an issue where it seems that I might not just be understanding the tree doc methods, but erasing text was throwing exceptions. Uh, if you erase all of the text. So still looking into that one. Uh, otherwise, uh, there was another optimization I had for pure CRDT with uh, fetching items from the DAG, although I just saw the, was reading the proposal that we might not need to be doing that. Uh, but I have that PR there and ready. Cool, yeah, it was, it's, it's the, Totally, if there's an optimization, it's more than welcome uh, right now. I, I think I'm, I'm, I'm still trying to decide whether to, to make a different transport altogether from, from this one. And so that, that we can, can live with, with any and choose, and choose from, from, from any. So they have different timelines, obviously, so. Yeah, yeah, I saw that the bit swap uh, that we're using, it still put in like a second to second and a half delay on Fetching anything. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, yes, it's a, a problem that that's being, I think it's being addressed with with Dax sync, um, but yeah, it's a hard problem to solve also. <laughs> and uh, also the Sekio overhead, it's it's also biting. Uh, Pedro, also um, Lance and I, in if you look at uh, PurePad core issue sixteen. I don't know if you've seen that or not. Um, Lance and I discussed some possible optimizations to um, uh, PeerPad core and documented it here, um, where um, we would uh, use uh, signed snapshots um, in the DAG tree and um, keep operations out of storage. And so operations would just be sent to peers but they would reference their parent uh, snapshot. And so as clients decided to make snapshots because say I typed a bunch and then stopped typing for a while, my client might decide to make a snapshot. Um, other clients can then sync to that snapshot um, based on their, their current head, just like we do with CRTD operations, uh, except entire snapshots and then um, and then apply, reapply whatever operations weren't that they had that hadn't been applied to that snapshot that weren't part of uh, the children there. So, um, so something that would be essentially using the DAG a lot, lot less than ra rather than uh, recording every um, operation, but the operations would then would just be sent directly to the peers. Anyway, it's an idea that we've been discussing that. Um, would have a lot less um, DAG churn. Right. So, so basically, you're you're using the the DAG for the snapshots, right? So, and you're using YJS for the real time stuff. 
Okay. Uh, yeah, I have I have some questions about that, but I think I think I, I have to think a bit more about 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 that. Um, so I, we, I can take it on offline. Um, and then a, a comment there with some questions. Yep, and it wouldn't necessarily be YJS, but something to send the operations to peers. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah, which I think uh, David just recommended that we could uh, create a direct channel between peers uh, already. So that'd be what we would do. Right. Y yeah. YJS, yeah. So YJS, you, you can get duplicates a lot, a lot of duplicates because you um, because you don't have a central point. So you they're, they're making peer to peer to peer. So you can get a lot of duplicate operations uh, because of the topology it forms. Is everyone connects to 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 everyone? Um, and so it would be cool to have a a different topology, which is something that I am addressing on um, on that on that uh, issue I mentioned. Um, but yeah, I think I think this is this this uh, needs to be to be discussed. Um, there, there, I think there's like two things here. Um, mm -hmm. So there is like using YJS as a channel to transfer updates because YGS always seems faster, but like the reality is like YGS is just faster because it doesn't have like all these round trip, trips from BitSwap. And therefore, like if you just open a channel, as Lance is saying, like you just, just pipe through the whole thing through, right? Like you just pump all the updates very quickly. And, and then like BitSwap might still try to do, but then BitSwap will realize, oh, I already have this box, I don't have to ask anymore. So like it will just like work nicely. Um, other fun things that we can look into is just having accumulators, like something that's like, for example, right now, like we are broadcasting the heads and like the heads point like to our own log and then people have to fetch like pieces of our log and like understand what they are missing and like attach to their log, etc. But like there is no way to like from ahead of the log to understand like which updates like we already have that are part of that, that log. So having something like an accumulator, like something that is very small, but like like a boom filter that lets us test if we already have the updates so that we don't have to do any fetching, might also reduce a lot of this like back and forth of like telling me what you know, right? Um, mm -hmm. but that can be achieved with, with vector, vector blocks also, it's a compression of, of the operation. You can, you can easily infer whether that op new head is either included in your, in your uh, heads or it's concurrent or it's in the future of your head. Um, I think you can achieve that with, with vector clocks. Uh, yeah, I actually don't know if like vector clocks like uh, are within the space of research of accumulators, but, but I agree, like they, they, are t they totally would work as an accumulator because then you know what got transferred, what didn't. Um, so yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Is there Hmm. Is like I know like so there's this issue uh, we can like just continue work, uh, expanding on there. Let's make just sure that we don't lose the, these ideas and that we just expand them on issues. Mm -hmm. Yep, yep. Okay, so um, Nathan, you wanna go ahead with your your update? Sure, my update. <laughs> I've been working a lot on um, uh, with Lance um, on these ideas, and um, I've been uh, working on. Um, let's see, it's in it, on peer identity, which is that did uh, JavaScript implementation. So it's in IPFS shipyard peer dash identity, um, and um, yeah, that's been my week is, is I've got peer identity pretty much done and that's the JavaScript implementation of generating the documents, self-signing them, and then having a way of sending them to the identity service. And then I'm going to convert the D app, um, the D app identity service, which is the, the centralized identity service to, to use those methods. Um, and I'm working on, um, yeah, just, I've just been, Support for Lance and the identity, those identity things that I mentioned before. So that's been me. Okay, thank you, Nathan. Um, 
So anyone wants to add another update or can we jump onto, onto the, the rest of the agenda discussions? I think some of them we've already had, so uh, no updates? No, okay, so let's jump on. So uh, discuss proposal for key management and address book. Uh, Andre, uh, anything you want, you want to add? Uh, so this is a pull request. Ah, yes, nine for key management. Yeah, so this is the, the base pull request for Pure Star. I think, I mean, people can read it. I think it's very long and take it and take it offline. Uh, any comments you you like? Brief comments. Anyone would like to to add on 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 this? Um, yes, uh, th there are there are a few issues uh, that needs to be need to be addressed. Like uh, we need to get a consensus on solving them uh, i think they are two i think let me check the pull requests so one of them is the passphrase uh right show and the other one um is the verifiable claims part which is kind of related to the identity but can be decoupled somehow because um the identity itself can be as as uh, fritz said it can be self-signed but then you have to be sure that you're talking to the real, uh, the real person. And that's, uh, that's something that uh, with claims and proofs, uh, you, are, you are able to, to kind of uh, prove that that's a person you're talking to. Uh, but I think we should look into verifiable claims, which is a standard that is being developed by the uh, W3C working group VC. And, um, I think we, we should kind of adopt, adopt the, the data model around it because they have a few examples already with, with how those proofs and claims or claims and proofs are uh, written in terms of JSON LD, uh, as well as the, the DID, um, we, we should uh, kind of adopt it in the, this proposal already. Um, and so there are two, there, these are two discussions here. And then we have also the key rotation and recovery that we still uh, must write something about it. But that's specific to um, like the revocation or compromise uh, or device being compromised. Okay, I think that one is, is important that we get it right before um, before merging this, this pull request. Uh, but the first one that, that you mentioned, um, you think it's, it's uh, necessary to get uh, uh, verifiable claims to um, for for the the PR nine to be to be merged to get it right before. Um, I doesn't seem. Think... Sorry, sorry. Yeah. No, I was just trying to jump ahead as well. Uh, I don't think that's like settling on verifiable claims right now is super important because mm -hmm. essentially we will want those for proofs of identity mm -hmm. or proofs of personhood or whatever you might want to call them, and that's like a little down the line. Uh, mm -hmm. Right now, the problem is really how to securely provide access to a document um, on PurePad. And for that, you really need to settle on the other question about the keys, uh, not so much about verifiable claims or JSON web tokens or whatever. Yeah, I agree. We should, we should get, get to the key rotation right and then, and then merge. Oh, so um, so you you don't want you don't want to discuss the first question about using a passphrase or like using device keys or how that would work? Oh yeah, yeah, that, that's that's you're right. That's important too. Uh, okay, so I can I like make a fifteen yeah. second presentation of that? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. So. Yes, well, yes. Okay, please. so um, so essentially, Andrea and I have been going back and forth as how to um, get, get as to how to provide access to to a peer pad document. So assuming that the users know each other, they have already verified their identities, and they know, like each user knows the other user's public key, right? So from there, we developed a concept that the users could generate a bunch of key pairs and sign those key pairs, I mean, the public keys essentially, with their root private key. And each key pair would be attributed to a device. So I would have a public key on my cell phone, uh, on my smartphone signed by my root key, the same thing for my laptop, like whichever device, whichever devices I own. Um, and from there, like from my device is where I would request access to a peer pad document. Now, the question comes, um, how, do you, how do you request that access? Because 
what, what I think could be done is um, I make, so let's say that Alice wants to request access, access to a document that Bob uh, has in PeerPad and Bob has access to it. Uh, Alice can just send a request saying, hey, Bob, uh, so you know me, I'm on your, I'm on your address book. Uh, here's my device's public key, like from my cell phone that you already know. So could you please send me the document key? Now, uh, in this case, uh, Andrea believes we should take the document write key, encrypt it with Alice's device public key, and send it to Alice. Now, Alice has the private key on her device, so she would be able to unlock and get access to the document. Um, I feel that maybe that would be overexposing the private key because you'd be sending back and forth. Think, think about it, like for each document, um, you'd be exchanging two messages uh, using that key, and you could end up overexposing it. So a solution would be when Alice makes the first request, she could also uh, like generate a new temporary key, which could also be in a, an asymmetric key pair, uh, which says, hey, Bob, so here's my message. It's signed by my smartphone's um, private key. Uh, but when you, when you reply to me, please use this new public key that I just generated. Right? And then Bob would do that. He would sign the, 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 he would encrypt the right keys of the document and send it back to Alice. Alice has a temporary public key, so she would be able to decrypt it and access the document. Moreover, uh, those keys, those temporary keys, could be generated using a, using a, a passphrase, like a password that you use on every other service you have nowadays. Um, and that would allow Alice to be able to access the document in any other device. Okay. Uh, now, the other solution that Andrea proposed would be to, uh, when Bob generated that authorization, like in this case, we were not using temporary keys, so we are using like the device's key, uh, Bob would generate an authorization for each of Alice's device that he knows. So there would be an authorization for the smartphone, an authorization for the laptop, all of those authorizations signed with those device's keys. Um, yeah, so those are the two proposals here. Then there was a, a third choice that I, that I thought about, which would be essentially uh, joining both of them. So what you could do is you could send, uh, what was it? Yeah, I think yeah so he cool. starts by sending, yeah, so you, you make the same, so Alice requests access to Bob, she sends the, the she, sends, she signs it with her device's private key, and she also gives the temporary key, and then Bob would first encrypt the right key with Alice's device uh, public key, and on top of that, you would encrypt it again uh, with that temporary passphrase that she generated, right? Yeah, exactly. So that way, even if the passphrase got compromised, an attacker would not have access to the document. Uh, moreover, only if the password got compromised would the attacker be able to even uh, analyze a message, which would be sort of exposing Alice's private key. Um, so it just seems that overall to increase security. However, it does come at a cost because we'd be doing two signatures for each thing, uh, two encryptions. So that's where the discussion is. I know this is a lot to take in. So just if you have questions, <laughs> probably you should just answer them. Vito, go yeah. ahead. Uh, I think like the way to discuss or to reason about these things, like you really need to describe the attack vectors and like even do just some diagrams. There's like so many public, private, symmetric passphrases like thrown around that it's very hard to like have a productive discussion just with words and voice, right? Like, uh, and so this is the type of thing that needs to go into an RFC-like style discussion yeah. where there is a- We have some diagrams that we, you can look at. Uh, I will give you the link here on um, Zoom. So yeah, I'm getting it already, yeah. Okay. And so, and so have the, uh, let's have this discussion over there. The other thing I would like to say is make sure like to to like study the um, the related work, right? Like if you go into the PGP community, um, like Web of Trust, like rebooting Web of Trust, and all of other systems that exist nowadays or were created in the past that also deal with uh, asymmetric crypto they all have the same problems about managing keys. Like PKI is a thing for many decades now and like everyone keeps trying to defer responsibility to the next service provider until someone uh, just like, or kill everyone just like realizing the single source and then that's where the problem starts. And so really understand like what are the systems doing, how it compares to the solution that you're proposing, really like go deep on the attack vectors, like 
create a bunch of tests that you can then like go through these multiple proposals and really test them again a test against them the backpackers. Otherwise, it's very possible that like you're just going to miss one or many things. All right. Um, I have a I have a dumb question because it, it's a question of assumptions. Um, do we need uh, to actually encrypt um, changes to the document? Could is signing sufficient? For example, if I sign that so and so has permission to additively, you know, to make operations on the document, um, then um, then all those users, all the peers can choose whether to accept those operations or not um, from that user. Um, and and uh, also the, the document is discovered through essentially a hash or a dag head or the topic is rather discovered through some sort of hash anyway, which is by nature a shared secret. Do we, do we need do we need encrypted documents? That's what that's what I'm asking. I think that goes back exactly to the attack, the the threat models, the attack vectors. Um, like if someone wants to have absolute privacy, or if someone just wants to make sure, like there is the I want to share a document with you, and I just want you to read it. I don't want anyone else. And then there is the um, we are sharing a document and I don't want the rest of the world to even know that you have access to this document. Even if they cannot read it, I don't even want them to know that we actually have a shared thing that we are uh, communicating over, right? And so there is multiple attacks, like side channel attacks that by just observing like interaction, kind of like can guess what people are trying to plan or, or like just talking about. Uh, and so it is important to have absolute privacy. However, that is not always possible, or that is not always as cheap. And so then like you entering this like trade-off situation where like you can have, to have something private, but like maybe the world, if they do a lot of hard work, they will figure out what you are talking about and with whom. Is that okay? Maybe not, maybe yes. Like then it goes use case by use case. And then it's just a question of a UX. Like what are the cues that you give to the users so that they understand what's happening and that they don't get, like they don't um, shoot themselves in the foot. Uh, yeah, so in, the, in this case, I think we, in pure path, uh, uh, privacy was was a big a big requirement. Um, so obviously, you don't want to know the contents of of your your documents. So it's uh, encryption at rest means encryp encrypting the, the operations at rest. So when when it's stored locally, and and also encrypting at at uh, at transmission. I guess encrypting at transmission it's already covered by in our case SecIO. Um, all of the trans and the transport uh, below it, um, and but yeah, but uh, but I think I think uh, encrypting the document is. I mean, I, well, I know that if you have an SEL, you can you can check whether to accept or not that that operation. I I understand, uh, but I think also the operation should be should be itself should be should be encrypted. Um, Okay, so, yeah, yeah. so regarding the the pending discussions, um, th th this was the first one, and the second one um, is actually let me open again. Revocation, I think. Uh, yeah, yeah, it's a revocation. Um, so you, you want to discuss that? <clears throat> Or should we kind of offline? Look I think we're, we're like like four minutes uh, uh, <clears throat> after the hour, uh, unless I mean I, I can stay, but I'm, I don't know about what anyone uh, everyone else uh, <laughs> interested. Part is, I, anyone, is everyone okay with, with extending this for ten more minutes, like uh, up until the quarter past? Uh, yeah, I can, but I, th I think I kind of agree with David in, in the sense that uh, revocation, for instance, is something that a lot of, a lot of uh, decentralized systems uh, already have to deal with, and we should learn uh, from them and, and like come with, um, with a proposal 
based on, on uh, the knowledge that is already um, visible to us and open source and uh, discuss that afterwards. But yeah, we can discuss that, as, uh, as, uh, discuss that after, after this, this meeting, if you guys want. Okay, um, so yeah, well, yeah, we can, we can comment on, on that and, and take it offline. So, well, what's next? Uh, you are at the store, Identity Hub. I think you already addressed that. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I, I mentioned that in the in the updates. Um, but yeah, I, I, I think we should look into it uh, because I think it will solve some problems. Like essentially, uh, essentially, essentially, when you have a traditional server and client architecture, you store many things of the user in a centralized database, like MySQL or something. And um, you, the user, uh, after having a session, you can uh, grab those definitions or documents or whatever. So essentially, this is uh, something that can be used, but in a decentralized manner, manner and be replicated among devices. And this is something that we should look into it because it's a good foundation to build um, uh, one of the foundations to build DAPS, essentially. Yeah, Andrea is very concerned with the usability aspect of, of, of all this, as it should be. And yeah, he's is, is, um, is, is afraid that, that the, the user unfriendliness derived from the requirements, the security requirements, will impede new users from adopting uh, decentralized web apps and we should do as much as possible to to bridge the gap between between the the central centralized like experience and the and the new decentralized one and i think something like an identity hub uh, and a and a, um, a key store um will, will every, well um uh, synchronizable so a replicated key store uh, could be something yeah, yeah. that that, that helps out yeah. this 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 part. I think we're still further uh, away. I think we we should we should uh, 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 first uh, carve out this this uh, identity uh, part, May, keeping in mind that we for now don't have multi-device sync, right? We, we we I think we 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 can even even if if Alice asks for uh, a document on on a laptop and she wants to edit on uh, on the pad. And uh, she will have to ask again for for that for now, uh, but but if you solve like, like if you solve that without the the, the key synchronization, we'll be just just having half a solution. It's, it's something that is like a compromise, still a compromise. So I think we we, we should address multi-device uh, uh, sync um, identity sync in a in, in a separate uh, context, yeah. and, and then eventually get it get it done. I just mentioned this in the discussion because I, I, I thought it would be... Yeah, we need, we need to keep, keep this moving in parallel, I agree. We need to keep discussing yeah. this, but to be realistic, I mean, to have something like this by the end of, of, of July is, is, not, uh, is not really, it's yeah, not realistic. Be, bear in mind that this is my, also my first um, meeting, so I cannot... No, 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 it's, it's fine, no, no, it's fine to discuss it and, and bring, bring those topics to the table, something that we all yeah. need to have conscious that, that we, we have to chip, chip in. And it's very, very, very useful, but we, uh, um, in, but, but yeah, we just have to be, to be, um, to keep in mind what, what is, is the issues are and, and, and how to solve them and eventually we, we will solve them, I'm, I'm sure. Um, and, and the next one is actually pretty much of the same because um, when you think about another book, uh, it, it kind of can be stored in local storage and then be replicated among devices. Mm -hmm. And so this is somewhat related uh, to these identity hub stores thing as well as the, the identity itself because it, it's all cor correlated because when you authorize a device that you have previously trusted and added to your other group, you can trans kind of uh, transparently have or authorize the, the, that device. Um, mm -hmm. not, not automatically because you have to sh send a challenge to him uh, to prove that he's on control of the private key, but it can be uh, like, uh, in terms of YWAX, it can be um, transparent. Like in Keybase, for instance, where you just take a picture. Yeah. Cool. So some, so a paper, 
uh, to read and uh, yeah it's uh let's yeah um cool uh about identity anyone wants to i, I just have one them? more on systems mm -hmm. to really study for like this key management uh it's tough the update framework which is the thing that tor uses for deployment and, and like consider a system like tor where like if the signing key for the package gets lost or stolen or someone can intercept in some way then someone can just inject malicious code uh exploitable code into a system that everyone is trusting to pass their private messages and so check that um really understand like what their threat models that we're trying to mitigate i uh, also check docker notary because docker notary just grabbed the update framework and applied it to like large scale um enterprise deployment and they have some really really interesting like proposals like for example having one master key that is a hardware signing key that never sees a lot of the day uh, never like leaves the hardware device and only comes out to rotate other other keys and like that key has to be super secure um and then the other keys are the ones that get like like permissions to to then give permission to other keys and so there's like this tree of keys but then there's one at the top and like gives permissions to all the others and, and, and yeah like really really take all the ideas from those systems uh there's a lot of really good stuff there yeah i, I read a bit about uh, the um, about the, the the plate framework and the way they do this is uh, when the, an identity uh, announces in, in itself in this case it's not identity it's, it's something else uh, they say uh, which pub public keys they have and the ones that have been compromised and that way uh, the peers connecting to the plate servers can uh, compare to what they have in the local cache and if some of those keys are compromised they can just remove from from their registry and update uh, update or, or ask for new ones and they also make these uh, uh, by uh, actually disseminating, disseminating uh, the replication. So um, it, it will be cool for us to explore this concept on, on EPFS using something like PubSub or something like that. Essentially, essentially when a, a, a device is compromised, we could like disseminate that among the network. So, so every peer that has that key in his address book could, could just automatically remove that. Remove it, remove it. Um, but when they, they are offline, they and, and when they come back, uh, they could uh, when they are interacted with a with a with a public key with the identity associated with the public key, they will check against the identity. Hey, is this is this public key still valid? Is it compromised? And, and if it isn't, it, 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 there must be a, something in terms of the user interface and the the user experience uh, saying that that. Uh, user you are interacting interacting with is compromised. Um, so yeah, you know what I did when I did in, in terms of charities in the papers that I, as I was reading, I created an issue for each one of them, and and I explained to to other people what what I was reading. Like a quick two or three paragraphs is enough, and and that that way you can just capture, for instance, uh, uport and having like a quick summary of how uport works could be really useful for, for newcomers and people that are trying, trying to understand what are the consequences of what, or what, what the, what's the background of what, what we're discussing here. Um, and that would be really, really useful. At least to me, it was really useful. Um, so, yeah, uh, well, regarding Kyrgyz IT IPFS, I think we just discussed everything. Again, if people could just review view that probably make that into a different transport with a different package name um, garbage collection there's something reflected there um, how to infer causal stability and I would like to incorporate this uh, mechanism into the new transport not a requirement at the beginning but I eventually I would like to get there and this will enable garbage collection and so compact compacting the, the operation log and for faster sync and to save local space um, so no, no need to, to, to comment here unless unless you do want to comment something no okay uh, so quickly we're just running out of time uh, ACLs uh, I think we've discussed this between I think Nathan and I 
Um, access control for weekly, cons weekly consistent data stores is something what, what you, where the SEL is tied with the operations uh, log in a causal way. And this is discussed in, in this paper. Uh, if Nathan, you're going to implement an SEL on, to, on, on shared ETs, uh, I think you should, you should look at, at, uh, at, uh, okay. at this paper. It's very interesting if you haven't. Okay. Um, Great. It kind of goes into what we were discussing, uh, but has some implications there. There are some, some security implications, which are not very clear to me if they're very important or not. Um, but uh, some, that's a vector of attack uh, that, that, can, that can happen. Um, there's a discussion there um, on, that, on that link. So I think we're running out of time. Uh, anyone wants to question, have a question, Andre? Uh, yeah, I want just to, to say uh, that uh, Fritzi has been working on peer identity, if, if, if I'm right. So I think uh, there's a lot of, of overlap here between uh, him, me, and, and you, and basically this working group, etc. So I think we should like synchronize and, and be uh, and work on this together to get a, a nice library for for DApps to use, and maybe we could uh, like I don't know think about a, uh, about a solution to uh, kind of uh, converge together in a, in a in a solution. Yes, I, 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 mm -hmm. if, yeah. if I may, uh, uh, I agree and disagree at the same time. Like, if you think like. This beautiful bike shell has been trying to be painted since like the 90s. Uh, the thing with keys and rotation of keys and uh, PKIs and like web of trust and so on. It's something that has been a very long discussion. And so although let's definitely have a lot of pollination, like cross pollination between ideas, like don't block yourselves on like trying to reach consensus and agreement to implement something. Sometimes, like, I think, like, for what we want to do right now, and, like, a lot of this, like, trying and, and discovering by trial and error is important. Like, everyone just, like, takes their direction and explores and sees the problems and really experiences that, them on uh, the first person. Otherwise, we might fall into the trap of, like, just trying to design a thing by spec and not see the problems, uh, the things actually breaking. Uh, but, yeah, like, one of the things I take from this meeting is that there is a lot of things that need an RFC to be written. There's a lot of discussions that are happening over issues or like some side channels, some private conversations. And like, we really need to push that to a document that other people can like understand what's going on. Um, like app diagrams, that stuff that we can then take the ideas and like bring to our own side. Um, but, but, but yeah, like avoid trying to reach consensus first because that's just going to like be uh, like a, a huge time sink. Okay, okay, okay. I, I understand. So uh, I think uh, me and Joan, Pedro, perhaps we should work on a, def a different library and um, perhaps think about how we could uh, provide authentication via uh, one or two of the DID methods like uh, Uport and, and something else and um, see, see what's the, 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 um, the lower or the lower um, specification or the lower flow that we need to address and perhaps uh, evolve the library by adding some other DID methods along the way. Uh, but essentially, essentially that is, that's it. It's a way to provide or authorize um, devices via uh, different DID methods. And we should, that's our goal. We should, we should look at, at, at making that library and develop that library. And of course, we need to uh, analyze all the methods like the, 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 um, the um, Sovereign and, and the Uport and also the PID, which, um, which is kind of funny to, to, to see uh, the ID method on EPFS, which is kind of, of good because we don't need a, a blockchain, but it has some persistent problems, of course, but uh, we should look into all these methods and um, come up with a, with a nice interface and, and start using it in our apps. Yeah, I agree. I think you should, in terms of like, uh, in our case, um, next milestone is like tomorrow to, uh, to close the, this, this, uh, this RFC. People want to comment, okay. Um, it's fine, we just, just, just close it and, and then jump into planning what will be a subset of that that we're going to first address. Uh, and, and then and then that's and then just implement it. I think it's uh, uh, like like 
in two days we should be starting to one day two days we should be starting to to implement uh, to implement this um doesn't mean that that we as david said there won't, won't be any cross pollination we can then infer the the, the, the common uh, uh, the common things and, and generalize them into a uh, proper interface. Uh, but I think we need to have the, the field experience first. Uh, of course, we can read a lot of stuff, and I think I, Joao and, and you and, and I have have been reading uh, a lot of stuff. We should keep on doing that, but just keep iterating. I think um, we can we can also always always uh, go back to the drawing board and and. And, and create a uh, different spec, or, or fork this spec, and then and then change what what we're doing. It's not like like we need, like eventually when, once we announce what what Peer Star is, I think we should have it kind of uh, more or less well defined uh, set of set of libraries that we're going to, to implement. But I think we're we're still a bit a bit uh, far far away from that. Uh, I think we need some things other than than, than PeerPad to be using it. And I think we need to experiment with several uh, authentication mechanisms on top of uh, for PeerPad only, for instance. It's it's fine. Experimentation is is, is fine. Um, yeah. No, let me just say one thing: is that we should look into the Universal Resolver project or library mm -hmm. um, because it already uh, has uport and. I don't know the other method, but it, 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 it has it has quite some methods like DTCR as well and Sovereign. Yeah. So essentially, that universal software was made by Sovereign by a guy that works there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. The only drawback so, is a Java, a Java thing, right? It has a Java yeah. and, has, and has a Python uh, implementation. So mm -hmm. in practice, what that is is an endpoint. It's something that you run on your computer uh, on a port, and when uh, I'm negotiating with you in terms of proving or uh, getting your identity and stuff. I will be given your endpoint and I contact your endpoint in a standard way that's well-defined manner of getting information from you and uh, certain things from you, etc. So we should look into, into it and perhaps if that's not an issue, like having uh, to run custom endpoints in the machine is something that we could do, but obviously it will not uh, work on the browser. It works on desktop applications and and something like that, but it won't work on the browser. And so I kind of like they have all, all of these lift up, but we could, could can't rely on it for browsers and perhaps mobile applications. But we can look into the implementation of the, the protocol itself and perhaps externalize that into into a separate library or into our library. Um, if possible, because there's there there's there's some things that must be uh, kept safe kept safe in the server. Like I said, in the case of your port, you have a signing key that should be kept secret. Um, but yeah, we can look into it and, and explore the code and see what we can come up with by looking into it. Okay, um, sounds good. Um, all right, anyone else has any any question? No? All right, cool. Uh, so thank you everyone for joining today. Um, so we're going to still take a lot of these discussions offline into GitHub and IRC. Um, anyway, we will be here in, in two weeks. Um, so see you guys in the meantime. See ya. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Bye. See ya. Bring demos for next time. <laughs> <laughs> see you in the weeks. See, oh. see ya.